It's the things that we fear about ourselves that end up being the making of us. Often the perception of fear is worse than the fear itself. First time I ever had sex, I contracted HIV. I advocate for people with disabilities that have been in foster care. With all the fear that I've gone through, it's so scary, but it's worth it. It's worth it. My name's Nathaniel Hall. I'm a theatre maker and a HIV activist. I was diagnosed with HIV nearly 16 years ago when I was just 16. I'm Toby Green Adenowo. I am a freelance dancer. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about what you do. I have been a dancer since I was 13 years old. <clears throat> um, and during that time, I was in foster care. That initial fear comes when you don't know what's behind that door. You don't know what the children are going to be like. You don't know um, what the parents are going to be like. And you don't know what your future is going to look like. When you're in care and you are disabled and you are black, you're targeted a lot more. People know that they get more money for looking after you because you're in a wheelchair. And some families are being carers for the wrong reasons. So I moved. 15 different foster homes. In between that, I broke 75 bones. You're kidding, 75? Yeah. So it's been a journey and it's been kind of crazy. I, I have something called osteogenesis imperfecta type three, also known as brittle bones. So it means that I break bones super easy, but I'm kind of crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> I decided the most active thing to do, which is dance. Yeah, and what's that like overcoming that, maybe that fear of like moving your body? I would say it's been quite empowering. Um, and I think when I first started, it was quite scary. Um, but I found that in the end, it, I was able to move my body in a specific way that I was told that I couldn't do. So when I kind of, Discover dance, it, it was something that really made me feel free. I've said loads about me, <laughs> right? So I want to know a bit about yourself. Probably the most recent thing that I've done um, to overcome fear is stand up on stage and tell the world that I'm HIV positive. And at 16, I knew I was gay um, and I met um, someone on a park bench who was older than me. And so we started this, we had this summer romance, but um, as a result of that, um, I contracted HIV. So found out two weeks before my 17th birthday. Although I've got an amazing relationship with my family, I could just never say it because I felt like I'd let them down in some way. And every time I went to say it, it just got stuck. And then the longer you leave it, the, the harder it becomes. And over time that really kind of, that pain and that trauma grew inside me until I had a bit of a mental breakdown in 2017 and then um, decided that I needed to turn that around and I needed to say this thing out loud. I started to do some writing to kind of maybe process what was going on for me and that was kind of using my theatre making practice, my art as my therapy in a sense. So there's a whole, there's a whole like range of things and fears associated with it but for me reclaiming it and going actually it's nothing to be ashamed of it is a virus it's no different than a common cold it's just something that i live with once i've said it no one then has that power over me to to kind of discriminate or or make me feel worse about myself can you show me a bit of your performance and then you've got to show me some dance yeah because i'm desperate to see a bit of booty shaking <laughs> this is when i've taken myself to the clinic um, and just before i kind of get my diagnosis November 2003, the GUM clinic waiting room at Stepping Hill Hospital. I didn't get much better after the holiday. In fact, I spewed so much at both ends, I lost over a stone. Mum took me to the emergency clinic the day we landed, a waterborne virus. The virus passed and I started college, but I was still sickly and I had this nasty cough. And then the itching started down below. It was followed by seepage, thick green seepage. So I took myself to the clinic. Gonorrhea, non-specific urethritis, genital warts. They offer the big test, I refuse. But the doctor calls me back and insists. It's quiet. 
Running away from the waiting room is a long corridor full of doors, doors to examination rooms and counselling rooms. There's a water cooler in the corner, but there aren't any cups. There were never any cups. And at one end, red ribbons and a suggested donation box. Wow, that was amazing. I felt that. I could vision it, I could see it. Everything you were mentioning. It makes me feel so powerful. I love when I see their eyes glow and I see them suddenly perk up, like, oh, hold on a minute. It feels like ecstasy. It feels like a rush of strength, like I'm a queen. <laughs> Literally, I got my Beyonce on. It just feels so good because I know that they've never seen something like that. The great thing about art and kind of an expression is that you can say things without saying them. So you can kind of communicate what you're feeling or express your feelings um, through whatever it is, poetry, painting, dance. That feeling makes me feel like, yes, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I'm going to make change. <laughs>